Hello, everybody out there. Welcome. Welcome to my Magoosh students. You are with me here on uh, Zoom. Uh, welcome back and welcome to any of you who are uh, attending a class for the first time. Uh, also, I'd like to welcome everybody out there. We're letting, uh, these days we're letting um, students out there on YouTube uh, have a look in, a live look in on our classes that we offer to uh, students here at Magoosh who have Magoosh uh, subscriptions. So welcome to all of you out there. Um, feel free to uh, post questions in the comments and uh, and uh, interact there. I've got uh, my colleague is watching the um, comments come in and uh, she's going to share uh, questions with me if, if they come up and I'll try to get to people's questions here today. So uh, and of course you Magoosh students who are here with me here on Zoom uh, feel free to po put your questions in the chat for these classes that works better than unmuting yourself uh, because we tend to get larger numbers of students for these. Um, so anyway, welcome to everybody. Um, so uh, I just also, I wanted to mention uh, 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 something I forgot just a moment ago for uh, you st students out there on YouTube, you probably don't know exactly what's going on here. So uh, at Magoosh uh, with our IELTS product, we just recently in July released new features. Ex we're really excited about uh, where we have live classes for students, classes like these. But then also uh, we have classes uh, related to conversation practice where students can practice uh, speaking for the IELTS test. So those are for the Magoosh students that can show up. We usually have about two or three of them every week. And we, we spend an, a more than an hour of uh, getting students with each other and partners practicing IELTS questions and talking about language. Okay, so uh, anyway, just so you know, this is part of that for the students who are with us here today. And uh, I'm excited that you can all look in and, and sort of uh, see what's going on here and participate as well. Um, uh, at the end of the class today, we've been doing this every class so far, we're going to have, because we have all these new features as a way of celebrating and thanking students for participating, uh, we're going to do another giveaway. We're giving away uh, speaking grading credits. Uh, so anyway, uh, that is something that we, uh, uh, another feature that we've recently introduced. And, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, I'm seeing in the comments that my voice is low. Are other people having trouble hearing my voice? No, okay, maybe, uh, okay, good. <laughs> Yay, thank you for all the comments. Uh, uh, Agam, I see your comment there. You might need to, it may be your volume that needs to go up there. Other people are hearing me, okay. Um, anyway, at the end of the today's class, a lucky participant here today, if you stick around the whole time, we're gonna choose somebody who's gonna win speaking grading uh, credits uh, at the end of the class today. Uh, so stick around for that. Okay, uh, good. So today our topic is uh, developing your English reading skills. Okay, this is a really important topic um, and it's one that relates, of course, to the IELTS exam. It's an important part of the ex IELTS exam prep, um, but it is bigger than that, right? Um, when you are learning another language, uh, learning how to read in the new language is uh, a difficult thing, okay? It's not the same thing as reading in your own language. Uh, Maybe partially it is. If you can remember, I, I can't really remember this well, but if you, would, if you could somehow remember what it was like to learn how to read when you were young. I'm currently, I have two little, uh, I have two girls and they are, are both readers now. I've got a second grader and a fourth grader. Uh, but just a few short years ago, I got to watch them as they learned how to read from their teachers. Um, and it's a different, it, it's a, it's a different process even from that when we are now here we are adults we have all learned how to read in our own language possibly even in another language that is not English um, but now we've got the challenge of trying to develop uh, really strong reading skills in English as adults after we've already got a lot of basic skills and there are some things in my experience as a teacher, working with students as they learn how to read, 
that um, kind of uh, get overlooked or lost, or there are things that can be done to improve or make the process more efficient uh, and uh, more rewarding because you're going to learn faster. Okay, there are steps, this is work we're talking about today. There are no, I, unfortunately I can't give you any easy, simple tips to quickly improve your reading ability. Okay, uh, what I can give you are, uh, is advice about the things and you can do and the habits you can form and the practices you can, can work on that over time are gonna help you get better and ultimately, I assume everybody here is interested in getting better so that you can score higher on the IELTS test, but also probably so that you can read better when you get to graduate school or when you get to that job that you're, you're applying to uh, abroad, something like that, okay? So um, these are, these are uh, going to be today some tips for um, that kind of development, okay? So let's dive in, let's get started. I've got... Uh, we're, we're going to focus on five major sort of overarching tips for today. Uh, and I'm gonna give you some details about them. I'm gonna be doing most of the talking today. Some of our classes, we have opportunity for some interaction, uh, some activities like that. I'm gonna go through these tips here today. I think uh, we'll get through them um, uh, faster than, uh, than the hour and 15 minutes, and there should be time for questions at the end. Um, unfortunately, I just realized that I forgot to start recording this session so that people can watch it later. I feel embarrassed about that. So just to let all of you know here on Zoom, I'm going to start recording now. Okay, I'm actually going to back up so we're on our first screen here. Okay, well, at least I didn't forget halfway through the lesson, right? This is a little bit better. Okay, so let's, get, let's jump in. How to improve your uh, English reading skills. Okay, so uh, point number one to focus on today. Um, one thing that, that limits uh, folks who are learning uh, another language, especially as adults, when you all are outside of, well, some of you are probably still in school out there. Maybe you're reading a wide range of things, but by the time you're ready to take the IELTS exam, many of us uh, are pretty focused in our lives about uh, our majors, our careers, uh, maybe we have, uh, many of us have busy lives with families and jobs and other things. I don't know about you, but I do a lot less reading today uh, uh, than I did when I was in college or when I was in high school. Uh, it's not that I don't like to read, it's that I don't have a lot of time to read. I'm reading all day for work, but, I'm, but I, if I were preparing for a language test, I would have uh, some difficulty um, because I am not, uh, I'm not in a position where it is easy for me to go out and read lots of different things. And that limits your development. So we need to think about that. We need to think about what kinds of things can you start doing now if you're not doing them already to begin building out uh, a, a, a wider kind of net, a wider sort of a scope of reading material so that you can not only uh, learn about a variety of topics, but also, of course, so that you can expand your vocabulary around different areas. That's critically important for the IELTS exam in particular. Okay, so let's think about this. Here, I'm gonna put a, I've got a, oops, let me X out of here, go back. I forgot to copy this link earlier. Oh, come on, let me copy. Hello. Not back. All right, I've got a nice link here I'm gonna put in the chat. This is to a resource um, that we have for free on our blog, of course. Um, so here we go, I'm gonna put that in the chat. And I'm gonna get this thing back so you can, so it's not blurry for you. Okay, um, so here's a resource um, that I haven't shared yet, oops. There. It's in the chat for you there. So here's a resource. Um, it's it's a, a blog resource related to reading. And, and what you're seeing here, what I'm project, projecting on the screen is just, uh, it's a list that appears 
at the very end of that blog post, okay? And uh, this is a place to get started. So if you need to, uh, to read uh, widely, if you're not, if, if you're, at, ask yourself the question, how much are you reading in English and how widely about different topics are you reading about? Well, this would be, if, you're, if the answer is not very much, this is a place, to, a really good place to start, okay? Um, what we have here is a list of links, some resources here, um, most of which are free. Uh, I think there are some places on some of these sites where eventually you might have to pay for some content. But um, not only do these uh, resources provide really good examples of English writing, academic and IELTS-like English writing. Um, they also uh, cover a range of topics, okay? So, and, and that range of topics is also relevant um, to the IELTS exam, right? So if you're looking here, we've got new scientists, scientific American, scientific topics, okay? Uh, the BBC, many, um, many IELTS uh, reading passages come from things that are very much like the BBC uh, where you've got sort of contemporary news related topics. That's excellent stuff uh, to read. Yes, The Economist uh, is a really good one. Um, and I see in the comment here, here and um, uh, in the Zoom call that uh, as some of these you're finding quite difficult to understand, the, the reading might be quite advanced. Uh, hold that thought just a minute. We're gonna get to that idea. Uh, in just a little bit later in the presentation. Yes, uh, these, many of these resources are going to be quite difficult. So we'll talk about how to address that particular concern in just a moment, okay? Um, National Geographic, okay? Uh, here's a resource that's going to talk about environmental issues, other science-related issues, but but different kinds of topics than what you're going to find in a New Scientist or Scientific American um, and then down below, a list of periodicals of newspapers, uh, New York Times, Telegraph, Australian, New Zealand Herald, The Globe and The Mail. These are ones, again, where they're, they're probably going to give you some free content that you can use. Uh, and then eventually they might ask you to pay for certain things uh, that you find there. Um, so, but anyway, you should be able to find quite a bit of free material there if that's, if that's an important consideration. Okay, so. This is a place to start. Again, the tip is, the advice is, and it's really, really important, that you should be reading the right kind of material, okay? You should be challenging yourself with things, okay? So it's not the same if you're reading, um, you know, certain Facebook posts. <laughs> you know, some of them might be really good, but other ones are not going to be writing at this level, right? If you're reading, um, uh, maybe your reading is in a particular interest area that you have. Maybe you're really into sports or music or something like that, and you really gravitate towards those. That's fine. There's no harm in reading those things. But you, if, if you find that you are only reading certain things in English, uh, emails or work-related stuff, if that comes in for you, then you need to very intentionally look more broadly at topics that are different from the things that you normally read, okay? And uh, for the IELTS exam, things that relate to the test in some direct way, okay? So pretty simple, but it requires work. As I said, Earlier, I know many of you, um, many of you are very busy like me. It's hard to find time. We're going to talk about prioritizing these things here uh, later on in the lesson. Okay. Um, I see uh, Malika. I see your question in there. Which one is highly recommended? Uh, I would I would highly recommend all of these. Actually, what what I'm highly recommending is not to focus on any one of these, but to try to uh, study broadly. Okay, try to cover a, several of these in your regular English reading. That's the kind of practice that I recommend uh, to improve your English uh, in a way that's going to benefit you most for the IELTS test. Okay, um, good. All right, I think that's a pretty simple point uh, to make. We'll, we'll get back to some of the ideas here that I, I previewed in just a moment. Okay, um, let's move on to the next point. Point number two. 
there's some common mistakes I want to start here early in the early in this class discussing. Okay, and these mostly relate to the way that people read. Okay, that when you are reading in English, um, you should not read exactly the same way that you read in your native language because you are not yet as fluent in English as you are in your native language. So there are some things you should do in order to accommodate uh, for your uh, lack of skills yet, right? So you, you need to do speci some specific things to make sure you're uh, getting the most out of the practice that you possibly can. Okay, let's talk about some of those things. Um, so this is related to what we just talked about. And this is one of my favorite things. I talk about this with speaking also. So apologies. Uh, actually, we have a phrase in English, you may have heard it before, uh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> have you heard of that before? Uh, that's something we say when we apologize, we say, okay, I'm repeating this a lot, but I repeat it because it's important. So I'm actually not sorry for repeating it because I want everybody, if you've been here to a couple of these classes, um, uh, I want everybody to get this idea for speaking and for reading and writing in any, any area of the test. Um, you need to get out of your comfort zone when you're reading. So um, uh, like I mentioned just a moment ago, if your reading focuses on a very specific area, then you need to get out of that area. Okay, you need to intentionally look broadly. Okay, I talked about that already. We don't need to get into that again. All right, uh, next one. Oh, I put up both points at the same time. Okay, well, apologies about that. Here we go. So uh, the second point here, focusing on the middle. Um, this relates to how you read, okay? So here's a simple thing, and this is something I see happening with students a lot, okay? Um, and I think this relates to the difficulty level question that came through in the chat just a moment ago, but there are also some other things here at play. This is a habit I would like for you to break. So, um, many students, when they are reading in English, I notice that they have their dictionaries right there and uh, they, they read and as they're reading, they're searching for definitions. Okay, if you are reading a text and every single sentence is really difficult for you to understand because you have to read, you have to look up almost every word that's that, not every word, if you have to look up lots of words uh, in each sentence, then it's very likely that that passage is too difficult for you at this moment, okay? It may not be in the future, maybe even in the near future, but uh, there may be uh, things you need to do to prepare yourself to read that passage. We'll talk about those things later in the lesson, but it's, it also just simply could be that that reading material is just a little bit too high for you at the moment. Your goal for choosing appropriate reading passages should, should be that you can comprehend a, a, at a minimum 70% of what's there and at a maximum 90% of what's there. You want that 10% at least of new stuff so that you can learn vocabulary, right? So uh, you don't wanna be reading simple, simple stuff that you have no trouble understanding at all. That's not gonna help you very much. You want that 70 to 90%. Now, it's not a, an exact science. Where you don't need to calculate all of the words, but a simple rule is, you know, if you, every single sentence is so tough that you've got your dictionary out, you're in trouble because you're not going to get very much out of that experience. Um, have you ever had the experience like uh, I have, uh, I share a lot. I, I have in my past, I've tried to learn Spanish. And I've tried to learn Dutch. Um, and I, there are many times when I, especially when I was a beginner, when I would try to read something and I would make my way through most of it and feel like I understood a lot of words but at the very end of the passage, if you asked me to summarize the whole thing, I would have had a lot of trouble doing it, right? Um, and that's because I didn't quite comprehend enough of the language that's there. So you want to focus on these things. You want to find something that's challenging, but not too tough, okay? And that's a point I make down here at the bottom. But then as you're reading, if you've got an appropriate passage, you should read through, attempt to understand what's there, and underline words to look up later after you've read the article, okay? So that also provides a visual cue for how much of the passage you really did or did not understand, how many of the words are new, okay? 
But what the reason this is important is that um, if you are reading every sentence, looking up a word every time, there's absolutely no way you're going to understand the overall meaning of the passage. Okay, it just isn't good and useful reading practice to approach it this way. So a simple tip for you is what I've outlined here, and I've just mentioned it a second ago. Instead of reading and searching for definitions as you read, read, underline, and then after you've read, search for definitions. Now, if you're reading something and it, it's at that 90% level or maybe even just a little bit higher, and you need to stop and look up one word as you go, of course, that's not a problem. What I'm talking about are these truly challenging passages where there are going to be several words, you, uh, many words you need to look up. It is far better to go through the whole thing, attempt to understand it as a whole, and underline things as you go that you can look up and add to your vocab journal later, okay? So anyway, those are, um, those are some mistakes I would really strongly encourage you to avoid, okay? Um, okay, I, Agam, I see your comment down there. Um, uh, find the New Yorker magazine quite difficult to understand, but I'm comfortable with economic good. Yeah, the New Yorker magazine is really tough. It's really good writing. It's great writing. Can tr keep trying to read that. The, the New Yorker articles are long usually, right? And the writing is fabulous, fantastic. So if you have a goal of writing well, uh, maybe I don't know what your interest is for, uh, for the future, or even if it isn't an academic or professional interest, if, if you just like the magazine or the topics, that's a really good one to look at for really super good writing, okay? Um, but the other ones on that original list before are also really strong. I, I think they're probably at a level, uh, thinking about the vocabulary and the ideas, they're probably at a level that's just slightly lower than The Economist, so I, or sorry, than The um, New Yorker. So I, I'm not surprised you have difficulty understanding. Them. Yeah, um, good. Um, how about reading from One Stop English? I, I have a hard time commenting on that. I've seen that site before. I'm not, uh, I, I don't use that website uh, often. I, I can certainly take a look at it at some point and see, see what I think, but um, I, I, I don't know enough to comment on that one. Uh, Lezzie's, I see your question there. Um, yeah, okay, good. All right, so some, some simple tips there. Let's keep moving. Let's keep getting through here. Let me keep watching the time so I make sure we have enough. All right, here's another sorry, not sorry. I won't spend a long, long time on this because I've talked about this in other lessons, but this is something uh, I, maybe I mention um, keeping a vocab journal in almost every class I teach. And, and I do it because I, 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 uh, I think it's one of the most important things you can do to become a better reader. And it is one of the most important things you can do for all preparation on all four sections of the IELTS exam. If you are, are taking the IELTS exam in two weeks or in six months, I would, if you're, if, uh, so I would strongly invite you to um, start keeping a vocabulary journal today if you are not keeping a vocabulary journal, okay? Vocabulary is critical for paraphrasing. Okay, and by the way, next week, um, we're gonna have a lesson on paraphrasing that has been one of the most requested, um, uh, most requested topics of, for folks. So anyway, that's coming up next week. And uh, anyway, um, uh, it, it's also really critical for uh, being able to understand paraphrases in reading and listening, okay? And to be able to actively paraphrase yourself for the writing and speaking uh, sections. Vocabulary, it's, it's so much of that is vocabulary. It's also grammar, of course, too, but vocabulary is key there. Okay, so anyway, keeping a vocab journal. Um, let me just quickly um, give you some tips on, on that uh, here. One second, let me get something up here. Um, okay, so um, here we go uh, into vocabulary journal. Um, good. And I see some other questions coming in um, about the reading section, but good questions not directly related to, um, uh, to this. So uh, if there are questions, there's going to be time at the end. Amitabh, I see your question there. Uh, we, we, will, I, we can absolutely talk about that at the end of the lesson today. Okay, so let's save that one until the end. 
Um, good. So here, uh, here are some tips on, um, on a vocab journal. Let me see. I've got a lot of stuff going here. I apologize. I'm getting a little distracted here. Let me put um, another link here in the chat for the Magoo students. Uh, oops, one moment, got the wrong thing there. Okay, and that uh, you can find that on the YouTube folks can find that should be able to find this as well underneath there, you should see that. Um, okay, let me get this back going. Okay, so um, this blog post is a long one. I've shared it in a couple of other classes, but there is a, if you look in the middle, there's a link at the top in the, um, in the table of contents that gives my brief recommendations for uh, how to organize and manage your vocabulary journal um, very quickly to summarize some of these points that are there. So the key points about your vocabulary journal, um, your goal should be 10 to 15 words every day if possible. Okay, that's a lot. All right, actually um, 10, 10 doesn't seem like a lot, but if you do the math and think about 10 to 15 new words a day, if I'm studying for IELTS for three months, uh, yeah, think about all the words that are gonna be on that list. That's quite a few. That's quite a few words uh, over time, okay? Um, this is a, a, a recommendation based on um, a lot of research. Um, there are, of course, variations in people's ability to remember things, but 10 to 15 words, most studies confirm that that's pretty much the upper limit for what you can truly um, learn in a useful way uh, in one day, okay? So if you're studying and, and um, so anyway, uh, the, the advice is of course, don't, uh, some students get into patterns where they, they want to study vocabulary, they're super motivated and they put a list together of like a hundred words and they try to study all hundred words at once. That's what I'm recommending against here, okay? So set a realistic goal. Um, uh, yeah, so I see a question coming in there. Um, this is a part from flashcards vocabulary, right? Uh, you could create um, uh, your journal. Flashcards could be your journal. Uh, uh, creating flashcards would be a really excellent way of, of managing a journal, right? The journal idea um, is that you're kind of keeping a book uh, or a, a file in your computer or on your phone or something that you can easily access. Um, so that you can easily see, see these words. But flashcards, if you've got, a, if you want to build your own uh, kind of flashcards, or if, you know, Magoosh has flashcards you can use as well. We've got a free app that you can find in the app stores. Um, you can use that as well. But I really like, um, you know, uh, putting together your own personal uh, vocab journal from things that you are reading and listening to yourself. There's an additional layer of context to all to those words that you add there that is really powerful. It leads to deeper connections and deeper memory when it comes from something you've read and listened to and experienced yourself and looked up and you've taken the effort to go to the dictionary and look it up. All of those actions uh, lead to neural networks in your brain that kind of make things more permanent, right? And that's what the goal is, of course, of the, the vocab journal. So uh, if, you're wanna, if you want to create your own flashcards, I think it's a great approach. Um, uh, good. Uh, another question there, is Magoosh IELTS flashcard sufficient for IELTS vocabulary? It's a really, really useful tool. It's really great. The words there are going to help you on the IELTS exam. Um, and But as I just mentioned, I, I would, you know, don't stop there. Use the IELTS flashcards that we provide. And also on the, along the other side, keep your own kind of record of words that you're learning as you go. That would be my strongest recommendation. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, another, um, another, the second point that's under that, don't spend long chunks of time cramming for vocabulary study. This is really, really important. I think you, you probably are aware of this phenomenon where people in college um, wait until the day before their test uh, and then they study and then they go in and they don't perform as well as they could if they had spent a little more time before the test maybe studying in little chunks instead of waiting to the last moment and cramming. Uh, we call it cramming, where you're trying to cram information inside your brain 
too fast, okay? It doesn't work as well as studying over time. And that is particularly the case with vocabulary. The best way to study vocabulary is to, to see it regularly and think about it regularly. It's just like, uh, I, I've used this analogy a lot of times, but it's just like uh, learning uh, to play piano, okay? Uh, you, you would not imagine, you, you wouldn't imagine unless you were super, super good at piano, that you could sit down and play a complicated piece of music at once, right? After just hearing it one time, right? Piano players sit down and they practice the same thing over and over. I know that because my youngest daughter is taking piano lessons now. And I think I've heard her play her most recent song maybe a thousand times, okay? What she's doing in, as she's practicing that is that she is forging the memory between her brain and her fingers so that she can remember the song and play it accurately. The same principle applies to vocabulary. You need to touch the vocabulary many times. It is very powerful if you see the vocabulary you're studying out there in the real world, in the things that you're reading about, and it creates a, a, a deeper memory of the word in context. But then the, what you do with your flashcards or with your journal, you don't spend an hour studying that. You spend maybe 10 minutes. Pull out your journal or your flashcards or whatever you have going and spend a couple of minutes reviewing them and then put them away. You don't need to memorize them in one sitting. Your, your goal is to, um, to look at them many, many times over a period of a long time. So as your vocabulary journal grows, it becomes not 10 words, but it becomes several hundred words. Then you spend time looking down through the list Maybe you can cross off words that you feel you really mastered. You don't need to really focus on them anymore. And you just go down through your list and you, and you repeat that action that, you know, you're on the bus or you're on the subway or you're, you, you know, uh, you're making dinner and you've got your vocab journal out in front of you as you're cutting vegetables or something like that. Take a look at it then and then put it away and do that repeatedly over time. That is how you're going to forge deep and lasting connections with the vocabulary, and you're going to learn as much vocabulary as you can in the shortest amount of time possible before your test or before you go to graduate school or whatever it is that you're, is your ultimate goal that you're working towards, okay? So that's why I say at the, at the bottom, short, regular bursts of studying are best, don't sit down and try to memorize everything all at once, okay? All right, again, this is a sorry, not sorry thing. I repeat this a lot, but I, if there's one thing I want my students to do, it is to start vocabulary journaling. And so that's why I keep talking about it because it's really, really, really important, okay? Here's an example of what my vocabulary journal would look like when I was studying uh, Spanish, when I, uh, uh, a while ago, and this is what, when I was teaching in uh, classrooms, uh, had my college students uh, would all have to keep vocabulary journals, and they were simple. Uh, some students chose to do more than this, and that's fine, but I would recommend this as a minimum of what you should, what, what you should consider doing for your own flashcards or your vocabulary journal. So here's a nice fancy word down here. Have you heard that word before? Circumspect. Uh, it's not a word you use often, okay? And uh, maybe it's a brand new word for most of us here. Um, okay, so what do we do with this word? If we see circumspect in the New Yorker, we're reading a really tough article in the New Yorker and they use circumspect. Uh, let's find a synonym for it. Something that we feel comfortable with. A word that means pretty much the same thing. Or you can give it a short definition if that's more useful. Um, a really good definition of, or a synonym of circumspect is cautious, okay? So you are not, um, uh, you, you are not very bold, right? You are you're not gonna take chances. You're gonna wait and see what happens. That's the idea when you're cautious, you're gonna be careful. Maybe that would be a good synonym, an easier synonym for you, right? So we put a synonym, we put a simple definition. The goal here is that it, this should not take you a lot of time, okay? Uh, I don't want your vocab journal to become a huge effort for you. I want it to be simple and easy. 10 minutes of study, 
a quick, a few couple of seconds to put in an entry and you're done with it, right? So we need to then though, well, we, we shouldn't skip this last step if possible. Um, add, a, add a sentence. So, so um, the new student was very circumspect of her classmates during the first semester. What does that sentence mean? This student wasn't very bold. This, we're imagining this student was cautious, didn't talk to a lot of people, didn't go out of her way, get out of her comfort zone. She was circumspect, okay? We put a, a, a definition there. Why do we do that? Because these definitions are proven to forge deeper connections in the brain, okay? So don't just stop at a definition or a synonym, add a sentence. That sentence is going to trigger something in here, a memory when you're using it, okay? Um, good. All right, so good. Uh, yes, and I got my see your question in there. Good. We, we will have time at the end to talk about that. Great. Um, all right. So vocabulary journal. We've got two more points here before we can start opening things up to some questions from you. Okay. Uh, point four, do some pre-reading and post-reading activities. All right, this one, um, this one is one that students uh, <laughs> sometimes you know, uh, I have to do some encouragement with them, but I, I strongly advise this activity as well. This is a practice. Again, this is something you would not do probably uh, completely in your own language when you read, but maybe you'd be surprised at what you do do on this list that I'm about to share of activities. So here's what I would recommend for you at, at a mim minimum. And by the way, this is good to do for IELTS reading as well in the phase when you are skimming at the very beginning when you're first coming to a reading passage, okay? So make sure you always read the title, especially on IELTS. If they give you a title, the title has meaning. So don't skip it. Look at that title. What do you think it's about, all right? Uh, what information does it provide you? Usually it's going to provide you the overall meaning, the overall basic message of, um, of the reading passage. So that's critical, okay? If there are pictures, if there are images, look at them. So what I'm advising here is if you are reading a magazine article, a newspaper article, and there are images there to look at and study, do that. Read the captions underneath. Don't just dive into an article and read it cold. Look at all of that information that's there first before you dive in, okay? And then finally, skim the paragraphs and headings to get a sense of what's in the passage. Not all, par not all articles have headings, but many do, especially longer ones that have different sections. Don't skip over those, read them. Practice skimming information to get the sense of what's in an article. That helps you on IELTS, as you are probably aware of the strategies we recommend at Magoosh for uh, reading, uh, tackling the reading section. Uh, which you know you don't have much time to tackle uh, in 60 minutes. You've got those three difficult uh, sections to to cover. Um, skimming becomes a really important skill to to work on. So do that as you're reading outside material, things that are not IELTS related as well. Okay. Another pre-reading um, another pre-reading tip here. Look up some keywords, people, and concepts before you get into an article. Okay, this is an extra step. Um, maybe this is optional, but I, I do recommend this. And this gets back to a comment. I forget who made this comment earlier um, in the lesson, but, uh, oops, sorry. Um, but uh, somebody asked a question about what, what do I do when the passage is really difficult? and I'm not able to tackle it. I'm looking at this difficult New York Times article or uh, something difficult from National Geographic. Um, how do I tackle an article like that? Well, um, don't, uh, if, you, if you suspect that the article is really tough, don't skip any of these steps. Go in um, and look at, do your skimming, do your scanning, look at the pictures. And then before you start reading, you can spend some time diving into some concepts that are there, some words, some vocabulary that stands out to you that you're not familiar with, okay? Go to, go to Wikipedia, look up information that's there. Go do a little bit of research about the topic of the article. It takes time, but the value of this is that it allows you to dive in to difficult reading material and to grasp enough meaning from it that it becomes useful for you as you're reading through, okay? So 
pre-reading, this is something I always do in my classes with students, and it's not just an exercise. It allows you to comprehend much more deeply. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to research anything for the IELTS test. This is not about that. What we're talking about is developing your ability to read challenging material so that eventually you are uh, able to handle it more easily, more quickly when you're taking the actual test. Okay, so these pre-reading exercises are a really good thing to do. Okay, there's also post-reading exercises that I strongly recommend. After you've read an article, this doesn't need to take a long time, but you should be able to summarize out loud, or if you've got more time and want to work on it in writing, what the main idea and what the main points of the article were. If you can't do that, then you didn't get the full meaning of the passage. You need to be able to do that. You can do that in your native language, right? If you read a newspaper article or a magazine article, um, you, you can read it quickly. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it. But when you're reading in another language, it takes that extra layer of comprehension and attention to be able to actually grasp the overall meaning and the structure of a passage, okay? Um, that tends to be one of the final, the last thing that really develops strongly for students as they uh, become really proficient readers in another language, that ability to summarize and grasp the overall meaning. And that is something that uh, is tested on IELTS in certain ways, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, we, we've, we've got very limited amount of time. So you need to be able to look at passages and have experience understanding and grasping the overall structure of how ideas are laid out, what the main ideas are, so that you can also do that skill on the IELTS exam in a very short amount of time. There are no shortcuts to this. You need to work on it. So if you're not in an English class where a teacher is demanding that you write papers on the English things that you're reading about, um, this is a key thing that you should not skip when you are practicing reading on your own. You don't need to take a long time for this. It's not really necessary. Take a couple of minutes, use it as speaking practice or as write, quick writing practice. Write a paragraph or spend a minute or two trying to out loud summarize what you read throughout the passage, okay? It's a really important uh, thing to, to try and to focus on, okay? Um, good, all right. I see more questions coming in. Good, save these questions for, uh, for the end, um, because these are good ones. I see some very IELTS specific questions in, in, and I'm really happy. We're gonna definitely have time to get to them here because I'm about to wrap up uh, my comments here for today. Just wanted to take a quick look though at just a, this is a sample passage that comes from uh, the Magoosh project, product. It's not the full passage, uh, but just, just to put something on the screen here to look at, you know, if I'm doing pre-reading exercises for a passage like this, um, I am, if I'm, if I'm new to English, I probably don't know what a cicada is. Maybe you do. Um, if you're in certain parts of the United States this summer, uh, you you might hear cicadas come out. They're this insect that comes out every 17 years and makes a lot of noise when they come out. It's a bug. Okay. And this article is about that bug. But if you didn't know that, it would be great, very useful prior to reading to go look up some information about it, right? Go to Wikipedia. Uh, see what you can learn uh, about cicadas before you read this passage, okay? And the information on Wikipedia or other places you might find might be uh, simpler than the article that you see here. So you're going to get some context about what you're reading, okay? You might skim through and look at the first sentences of each paragraph to get a sense of what they are about and gain some practice in trying to figure out what the overall structure of the passage is before you dive in and read it. Okay, so in this passage we're looking at, um, it looks like if we skim this top one here, uh, section A, we've got a, uh, so a basic a general paragraph describing cicadas and what they are. Um, and then in section B, if we skim that one, um, we start turning to this very unique sound that they make. And we've got a paragraph describing that. Okay, I've got a sense now if I'm skimming this and doing my pre-reading exercises of what's going to be uh, in this article if I'm doing that kind of thing. Okay, then post-reading after I've read this full thing, 
I'm going to try to summarize it uh, after the fact. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. Um, good. So let's get to point five, and this will wrap up uh, my comments here on this specific thing, and then we can get to your questions here. Um, so as I started off with this pr presentation talking about um, developing your reading skills so that you can be a better reader for the IELTS test and for graduate school and for whatever it is that comes next for you after you've passed the exam. Um, it's not, there are no simple tricks and tips to do it. It takes commitment. It's like exercise. It's like learning. Um, it's like learning an instrument. You have to work on it regularly, just like all that vocabulary journal discussion we had just a moment ago. So I would advise you at some point soon to set some very specific goals for yourself, okay? Um, uh, and I, and uh, I, I skipped ahead just a minute. I'm gonna get to the goals in just a second. Uh, but just to drive it home, I, I, I'm curious out there from any of you, um, can you think of an example of something, you can put it in the chat, something you have done personally in your life uh, where you had to train for it regularly over a long period of time, okay? What, so think beyond the IELTS exam. <laughs> what is something completely outside of IELTS that you have had to do in your life that you, there were no simple ways around it, you had to put in a lot of effort to practice and train for it? What kinds of things can you think of? Go ahead and put anything you can think of in the chat there uh, that, that would fit that kind of thing. Ah, okay. Preparing for coding interviews. Yes, good. So you have to, you know, they're gonna ask you a lot of very specific things. Learning to sing. Excellent. Yes, you have to train your voice to be able, you know, some, I think some people might, uh, some lucky people, it feels like they're born with some natural talent to do that kind of thing. And probably there is some of that. Uh, but uh, most people have to really train a long time to learn how to sing well, uh, how to rap, Isaac, I like that. Good, yeah, um, again, not something that comes naturally. You have to put in time to do it, okay? <laughs> to be a bathroom singer, I love that. Uh, learning to walk, you know, that's kind of funny, but actually that's true. Uh, people don't, uh, if you've watched a baby, uh, it takes them, uh, they're working on movements that, um, uh, they're working on movements all the time. It feels like almost from day one, uh, where they are kind of preparing to get on their feet and take steps. And you can watch that development, okay? It's not an instantaneous thing that happens all at once. Good. Um, yeah, running a marathon. Yeah, good. I, I, I uh, really admire that, uh, that you ran, run a marathon. I, I ran a half marathon a few years ago, and that was actually kind of the example that came to my mind uh, as well about all of this. Um, you know, running for a marathon or a half marathon, a long distance, there, uh, there are no shortcuts. Uh, every day you, yeah, well, not every day, you'll, you'll burn out if you run every day, but if you, uh, every week you need to set, create a plan, you need to create very specific goals around that plan, and you map, track your progress incrementally, right, or little bits over time, okay, as you move forward. That, I think, is a really nice analogy for what we're talking about here with uh, developing your reading skill. Okay, so, so I wanna suggest to you that tr you should treat your reading prep uh, for the IELTS, these examples we've talked about, okay? There's no simple fix. There are only actions you can take regularly to get to that place you need to go. So here's some sample goal. You don't have to do the, it this way. But here's what I would advise for you as a as kind of action plan that you can use to move forward, okay? So first of all, set some time constraints for yourself, something that's realistic given all that you have going on for yourself in your life. For the next number of weeks, whatever it is, or months, I will read for, at a minimum, can you read for 15 minutes or 30 minutes per day in English for a minimum of however many days per week. I would advise as a minimum 15 minutes for three days a week. That's not very much. I, I would actually advise a little higher than that, but if you're preparing for the test or really trying to make advancements with your skills, 
that's the minimum I would recommend. So, so set that goal, put it in your calendar, hold yourself to it. That's how you're going to improve, okay? Is if you set these regularly, regular reminders or regular uh, activities that you get into the habit of doing, okay? Secondly, a second goal based on what we saw, talked about earlier in the lesson, the readings I select will be at least somewhat outside of my comfort zone. Okay, you're, you're, not only, you're not just gonna read for 15 minutes, you're going to so strategically select readings that are going to help you to read broadly. And uh, if, if the IELTS exam is your goal, to read about topics that are covered on the test. Okay, so uh, that should be part of your goal as well. Um, third goal, I will read actively by doing at least some pre-reading uh, and I should have added post-reading activities here. Um, okay, so um, you don't need to do them every time. I, I know that students sometimes find them a little bit onerous. They find them a little bit tedious. Uh, nice, nice words there for you. The, they, um, they find them uh, to be a little bit annoying. That's a, that's a, 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 a word you're probably familiar with there. Uh, but I recommend them. They're a good habit to do. So do, don't skip them. Use those pre-reading and post-reading activities we talked about earlier in order to get the context and get develop your skill and understanding the entirety of a passage as you go. Okay. Um, the uh, next one, vocabulary journal. We talked a lot about that. And oh, I did put the post-reading thing. The last goal there, I'll attempt to summarize each reading out loud in English after I read. Okay, so you can add more. You could select from these. You can them in any way you like. But my point today is that you should develop your marathon plan, your reading marathon plan for the next couple of weeks, months, or even maybe indefinitely for, for quite a while if your goal is to really improve your English ability over time. Uh, and so that's the heart of it is to develop those habits. Um, and so that's, that's where we are today. Um, I know that there were a lot of questions that came through in the chat and uh, I'm really happy to say that we have a bunch of time today. I wanted to leave time. We've had a number of sessions where um, there, we've come up right to the end of the class and there has not been a lot of time for discussion, uh, but um, Today we do. So let, let's have your questions here. Uh, what questions do you have for me? If you posed a question earlier in the chat that I uh, could not get to, um, I think you could, should be able to go back and just copy and paste that um, into the chat again, and we can start and we could start with those questions that you that you see, so that we have a fresh chat down at the bottom. If you can't do that, uh, let me know. You should be able to do that, I think. Um, but we can also scroll back through and take a look at some of these. Um, OK, so Amitab, I remember you had a question about um, time management. OK, um, so so yes, how should you how should you manage your time uh, on the IELTS on the IELTS exam? Right. So you've got that 60 minutes. Uh, you've got those three difficult reading passages. Um, so this is a this is a complicated topic, and there you know you, you, so you have access to all of the videos that we have there in Magoosh talking about time management and how to approach uh, approach the the test strategically. Um, and so uh, I'm, I just want to build off of those, but then also refer to you to some of those to some of the concepts that are there, right? So um, the the core of it is that you're gonna to have to do enough practice to realize what you are capable of reading, completing within the 60 minutes time frame. So there's gonna be a practice component for you personally, right? Um, for students who read extremely quickly, I know and I'm aware of some students who are capable of, of reading through the passage from front to back and then answering all of the questions that are there uh, at the end. Um, but most students, I, I think that's a small percentage of students, most students are actually not able to do that. Okay, so uh, what do you do? My advice is, and, and um, uh, so my, my basic advice is to, to develop your skills for skimming, okay, underlining and taking notes about the section, and then you need to go back and um, 
and uh, you need to scan for answers. So what does that mean? That means, uh, and again, this is something, I, I don't know that we need to go into it fully in depth here. This is, a, we've, got, we've got lessons on this in, in the Magoosh product, but this basically means you're gonna, you're gonna strategically work on skimming, taking about no more than five minutes to skim a passage, trying to understand its basic meaning. You're doing things like reading the first sentences of each paragraph, reading the title. You're underlining what appear to be key words to you. You develop the skill of trying to comprehend basically where to locate particular information in a passage, even without reading it from carefully from front to back. That information that you get from skimming will then help you when you turn to the questions, because now you're going to go to each question and you should have some sense of where to search for the answers to that question in the passage if you've effectively read, uh, if you've effectively skimmed the passage uh, well. Okay, so that's the st strategy in its basic form. Um, but then, yeah, I would advise you to go look at either the blog post. We have the complete guide to, to the reading section that we have on the blog. That's a good place if you prefer to read about it or to some of the materials in the product, the, the video lessons that talk about that more in depth. Um, good. Oh boy, lots of questions coming in. Um, based on which criteria should we choose our keywords needed to answer questions? questions. Yeah. So, so um, this is not an exact science. Okay. Um, the key and the key words don't necessarily need to be that, that you choose uh, during skimming at the very beginning. So in that five minute period before you start turning to the questions, um, the, the keywords you pull out of there, you know, you're not doing anything wrong. If those the words you're underlining don't exactly line up with the questions you're about to answer. Because that's impossible to do. You, you can't 100% predict what words are going to be um, covered in the questions that you have to answer, excuse me. Um, so you, actually your goal is a little bit different there. Your goal is to not to predict what the questions are gonna ask you to answer in the skimming phase. The, the goal is to get a sense of what the overall structure of the passage is, how it's organized, what's in each paragraph. Could you write a little note by each paragraph uh, defining sort of what the key concept of that paragraph is? That information allows you to locate answers more quickly. It gives you a sense of where to look and it gives you a sense of what the passage is about, okay? And uh, your ability to do that well is something that translates into answering questions more quickly and efficiently when you get to that part of it where you're scanning for answers uh, later, okay? So I'd advise you to sort of not get trapped into thinking you need to sort of uh, guess or predict exactly what the questions, the keywords to the questions will be, um, but more so focus on trying to understand how the passage is organized there, okay? Um, good, good questions. Okay, we're going through. I'm just gonna go through in order here. Um, let's see, I don't wanna skip anybody here. All right, Agam, next question. Please discuss in detail on the scanning part. It's the most daunting part of IELTS reading section and all questions are based on this concept mainly. I have gone through all the videos of Magoosh for the scanning part and still unable to tackle this part in an efficient way, yeah. So um, yes, this is, this is, um, a difficult, this is the most difficult thing. Um, because effect, so effective scanning um, requires you to not only know where the information is, that's step one, and that's a big step. If you're, if you're searching all over the passage and unable to kind of locate where to look for the information, you're gonna waste a lot of precious time. And so it's an important step is to be able to sort of get to the place where you can at least start focusing on um, start focusing on the target language, or at least uh, identify the paragraph you need to get to. I, I would say though, as advice for you, so um, you've looked through all the videos, have you also looked through, so um, part of this relates to the specific strategies you'll need to answer each question type also, okay? So some question types, uh, you know, and there's a, uh, there's a, uh, discussion of this, I think the clearest one is on the official IELTS website itself, of each of the question types and whether or not 
the answers come in order, in the same order that the information is presented in the text. Okay, some questions are like that. Some quest types of questions are like that. Some question types are not like that. They could be found anywhere. Um, summary completion questions. It's not guaranteed, but you could, you, it's, all, it's nearly 100% of the time that summary completion questions, those fill in the blanks where you have to sort of complete the paragraph summary, those are gonna come from a small section of the reading passage, okay? So part of the puzzle for you, I would imagine, Agam, is to really master each question type and to know each of these little details uh, provided about where to search for the, the answer. That's part of scanning as well, is to know what the question type is asking you to look for. Is it a detail-oriented question? Okay, if it is, I need to go find a detail. And that's gonna to be tough because it might be buried somewhere deep inside a paragraph somewhere. Uh, if it's a matching headings question, right, then you know you're going to have to probably at least skim the entire paragraph. Those take a long time because the, the matching headings questions ask you to provide the main idea from, an entire, from the paragraphs that are there and to weed out the ones that do not accurately capture that. Okay, so that's a different type of scanning exercise that you're doing there, okay? So my advice to you, if you're having trouble with this, is to focus on, those, uh, focus on the question types next and really master the strategies and the under, understand what each one does. And if you're still having trouble with it, it could be because you're having difficulty with the language. So doing the actual work of paraphrasing the language from the question to over from the reading passage itself, there might be some difficulty you're having comprehending that. And, and of course, that is what IELTS is attempting to assess, is whether or not you can do that well. And so that might be part of it. I, without knowing 100% your English language skill and your abilities, underlying abilities, I, I, can't, I can't say 100% if that's true, but that's often the next sort of thing that I would recommend is that, you know, you're, you're just going to have to do the work of learning all that vocabulary and doing what we talked about today and reading all of these different sources so that you acquire enough knowledge and language in English to be able to comprehend these topics uh, a little more closely. Okay, so those would be a couple of things I would recommend for you to start with as a way of uh, tackling that difficulty you're having. Okay, I hope that, hope you found that helpful. Um, all right. Uh, I've got a question coming in from a YouTube uh, uh, viewer. Uh, is there a pattern to be followed while preparing for IELTS? Um, yeah, so um, now there's not one pattern, okay? But there, there are many different roads that students need to take. Um, I would advise if you have a short time before the test, that you focus on strategy and learning about the test. These things I was just talking about, about learning about question types, format of the test, and what's expected and, and how you answer each question. The IELTS is kind of an unusual looking exam. It doesn't look like a lot of other exams. There are some questions that look familiar, like multiple choice and things like that. Um, but you know there are some very unique question types on the IELTS exam. So students, even native English speakers, when I when I show the IELTS exam to people I work with, for example, they, they're not very familiar with it maybe, um, they are, they're often a little confused. What, what is this question asking me to do? That if you have a short time, a month or less, I would focus on that. And, and you know, of course, do the vocabulary journaling that I talked about earlier, but it's probably not enough time to learn a lot of new words and to, to really acquire a lot of new grammar. So uh, it's much better to focus on the test. Um, I would also highly recommend that you take a, okay, we've got a practice test uh, on the blog that you could check out for free, um, but then Magoo students also have um, a, a mock test that they can take, practice tests. There are other places. Some students go ahead and sign up for the official exam as a kind of practice. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, it costs some money and it's not, uh, you know, it takes time and it's not something everybody wants to do, but you should definitely try to take the test and sort of gauge where you're starting from. And that's gonna give you information about, hey, you know, maybe 
I am really strong enough in the, I'm, my score is high enough in the listening section and I don't really need to focus on listening. So then you can focus and target the things that you actually do need to focus on. Um, and so taking practice tests or at least some type of diagnostic would be something I would find, uh, highly recommend. If you've got a longer amount of time, some students out there, and I've even, I've, you know, I'm aware some of the students here in the Zoom call the lesson today are, have this situation. You've got more time, you've got three months, six months, um, then you can really make improvements to your underlying English language ability, right? So you should be learning about the test and doing all those things that I talked about, but you should also absolutely be studying vocabulary, studying grammar, getting a speaking partner, or if you're, you know, if you're a Magoo student, showing up for the conversation clubs that we have three times a week, right? We've got opportunities for people to practice their conversation regularly. So those are the kinds of things that can really benefit you over time. Um, the conversation club, I think, can also help you in a short amount of time too, because it gives you a sense of um, what's on the speaking test and what the questions you like and sort of how to answer them. It also, another thing I'm finding, so the conversation clubs are pretty new for us. And another thing students are talking about who are in them is that um, they feel a little nervous talking to me and talking to other students in the class uh, about the questions. And actually, I think that that is really good practice all by itself to feel nervous uh, because you're going to feel nervous potentially on exam day when you have to do your interview with, a, with your interviewer for the IELTS test. And it's good to have that practice under your belt, we say, uh, as an expression. Uh, you, it's good to have a practice that you've done repeatedly so that you can hopefully feel a little less nervous, okay? So uh, anyway, a lot of ideas there, um, but uh, yes, that, those would be my general recommendations for how to approach studying. Um, okay, I see a question here from uh, Varsha. Should we focus on dates or periods when skimming through the passage while practicing for IELTS reading? Dates are good. I usually underline dates, and maybe you don't even need to underline dates because the numbers and, and um, capitalized word, like names, places, I think visually those stand out a little bit more. So. You may not even need to underline them. Uh, I find that when I'm skimming, scanning, uh, you know, those things pop off the page uh, pretty clearly. So um, you try it. If you, if you find that useful, try it. I don't know, that I, I'm not sure that that's the most critical thing. I, I think the most critical thing is to read, um, is to, to spend a little time reading the first sentence of a paragraph. And then uh, trying your best to go through and, you know, you're doing your underlining, underlining things that appear to be significant as you're, as you're skimming through. And, but the key thing is developing, practicing your ability, your skill of trying to at least come up with a semi-accurate um, uh, summary of the paragraph in like a couple of words. Now, you're not going to do that perfectly when you skim. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it as a native English speaker either, uh, but you can get surprisingly close after you practice this uh, a bunch of times and that ability to put that little summary note there uh, next to the passage is really beneficial when you start answering questions. Okay, so, um, so dates, periods, mm, uh, try it. If it's good for you, I tend to sort of not uh, do that because they stand out visually. Uh, it's those other things, though, that I would recommend as a little bit more important there. Okay. Um, good. Um, all right. Next question. Manpreet, uh, I am never successful to search for answer by keywords. Okay. Um, that is, that tends to be uh, that tends to that tends to be a uh, paraphrasing issue. Recognizing paraphrase. Uh, uh, so I would recommend, uh, Manpreet, I, I, I think that um, discussion we had a moment ago about um, continuing to develop the specific vocabulary you need to, for these topics and these kinds of reading passages that you're going to encounter on the IELTS test, that is uh, significant, that, that's important info, uh, advice um, for you, I would, I would say, okay? Um, Elliot, I took a six month subscription. I have plans to give IELTS general in two months from now. Practicing reading questions, should I start from day one, complete all lessons of reading and then start doing a practice test? Um, no, 
actually, I would take a practice test early, especially since you have a lot of questions you can get through. Uh, there, you won't fall short of questions. Um, so take a, take a practice test sooner than that as a kind of way of diagnosing what you need to work on. You may be surprised, especially since you are a general training student, as you are aware, the first two sections of the test are um, the, the readings and the language are a, a little bit simpler. They tend to be um, related to more daily life and work related topics that students tend to be a little more familiar with. I'm not certain about your specific case, but it would be worth trying to take a, a, a practice test, seeing how you do, and then deciding how you want to focus your studies after that point. You may find that your score is very close to what you want to get, or you may find that it's very, very far from where you want to get, and that, ought, that information ought to influence how you then progress and how you approach your studies from that point on, okay? So, um, yeah, I mean, there's no one perfect way to do this. You know, if you, uh, for students who have absolutely no awareness uh, about the English or about the IELTS exam, or they have, you know, they, they don't have a lot of context about it, um, I do think it's good to go through the basic lessons and to learn a little bit about what's there before you take a practice test, um, because that information does help you. Uh, in a basic way, but I would not go through and do hundreds of practice questions first and then take your first practice test. I would do that in a reverse order. Yeah. Um, okay, a couple more. We've got a few more minutes and these are all great questions. I'm going to try to get to as many of these as I can here. Um, here we go. Um, all right, in case of... Yeah, so uh, in case of matching information passes, the questions don't come in order. Yeah, let me share um, here. I'm gonna put, I'd like to share with all of you something I find really useful. So thinking about specific question types, I mentioned a moment ago that uh, about um, certain question types have information that either does or does not come in order. Um, if you go to um, the official IELTS website, there's a good, oh, and of course, my information is, my connection is slow. Um, they have a really nice um, section here on test format. Okay, I'll just share the link here. Um, I'll just share it with everybody here, test format. And if you go through, excuse me, there it is. Put it there. If you go to the reading section, if you haven't seen this already, um, so this is nice because it describes each of the activities. So if you're pretty new to IELTS, you know, um, this is an additional resource. If you're a Magoo student, you know, we cover these things in, in the product, but the, here's a nice, I, I like this um, resource here also because it goes through, if you go to the reading materials there, there's a general training and a, a academic reading section there you can take a look at in that, in that link. And they describe it and they will tell you for each question type, the key features of that question type in a really nice summary, right? And so um, one of the pieces of information they provide is um, whether or not it, this is a type of question where the answers come in the same order uh, of the text or whether they could come anywhere and they could be scattered throughout the text. Um, and, and that's really useful information to have. So there's a nice resource to take a look at as a way of um, studying for those kinds of things. Um, so I, I recommend that one. Um, good, a couple of more. I've got a couple of questions. Um, okay, will you advise to take help from Magoosh application of vocabulary to improve vocabulary or vocabulary journal? I talked about this a little bit earlier in the lesson. Uh, I would use both. Um, so I like, I like the Magoosh flashcards. So, um, so Vikas is talking about the Magoosh flashcards um, and that's a free app that we have. You can find it in the app stores. Um, and so uh, what I like about them is that they're really handy for situations where you're with your phone, 
maybe you're on the bus or on the subway or or doing something where you know you're kind of killing time you're you're waiting at the store for somebody who's shopping or something like that uh, you can spend five minutes and you can flip through and it's going to keep track of words that you get correct and it's going to reintroduce words that you may have made mistakes on it's a nice tool for learning good vocabulary and it gives you some context around each of the words a definition it's really it's really useful but then also i i would use that tool that's one nice thing to do and then i would also recommend the vocabulary journal that we talked about earlier in the lesson because those words are words that you have personally pulled out from the things you listen to and read they have a deeper context and meaning for you because they came from things that you were trying to understand and comprehend your actual use of english for whatever it is that you're doing and um, so those are, so I would recommend treating those words in your own personal journal or your own personal flashcards that you create uh, separately. And you can, you can do both. Uh, and you could maybe on Mondays, you look at your vocab journal and on Tuesdays, you look at the flashcards or whatever. There's no exact way to do it, um, but I, I think they can be complementary, and they can, you can use both of them and they will benefit you quite a bit. Okay, good. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what, I've been doing a lot of talking um, <laughs> and we're about here at the end. I, my voice is actually starting to get a little bit uh, hoarse, I can hear. Uh, there's one more question here. Um, uh, good, so um, Isaac's question, I wanna make sure about uh, the practice questions and practice tests in the dashboard are, are used for self-learning. Yes, so, um, so the practice questions on Magoosh, Isaac is talking about, those are, those are things that you do at your own pace that you study in Magoosh. You can, whenever you have time to study, you can, you can answer a few questions at a time, or if you have more time, you can sit down and do a full practice test if you want. The purpose of them is for you to, to organize your own uh, plan and to study when you have time to do so. So yeah, that's the idea with our practice format that we have with Magoosh. Okay, so we're at the end of our lesson here. We're at the end of our time. As promised, uh, since we're doing a, um, a giveaway uh, for, uh, since we, uh, as a celebration, I mentioned this way back at the beginning of the lesson um, that we're doing a giveaway because of the release of our new features. We're just kind of celebrating that. And I wanna say congratulations to Maria Ochoa. If you're out there, you can email the email that's in the chat in the comments there and, um, and, let us know uh, how to contact you and we can give you, you've won some free uh, speaking grading assessments. Okay, so congratulations to Maria. Uh, uh, please reach out in the chat or um, in the comments to the email addresses there and we can, um, we can give you your prize, so congrats. Also, for any of you out there on YouTube still tuning in, um, you can use, there's a promotional code if you're interested in signing up for Magoosh. Uh, I'll put it here on the shared screen that's there. It's IELTS Live 20, and that allows you to get 20% off if you subscribe to Magoosh. So um, feel, please use that, feel free. Um, okay, thank you everybody. Thank you to my Magoosh students here. As always, great questions. Uh, we're gonna have more. Um, so uh, we're off on Thursday and Friday this week, but start, uh, tomorrow we have Conversation Club. Uh, so that is going on on Wednesday, um, and then we'll have more Conversation Club and lessons next week. Um, so make sure to tune in. Uh, all of you out there on, on YouTube uh, will be live again on YouTube um, next Tuesday and Thursday for more lessons, okay? So thank you all uh, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.